All right, by Nate, I think we're off to a good start, an excellent start looking at data and security. Um, so when it comes to data, in a lot of organizations, uh, you, your whole goal is to gain insights and information from that data. Data is raw, information is processed in a way that people can understand it. Uh, it's very important that you get more driven from your data. So coming up next, we're gonna have someone to speak about sorting and specializing in that data and how to use data-driven revenue streams to better serve your consumers. So please welcome the first ever Condé Nast Chief Data Officer, Karthik Bala. Hello everyone, good afternoon. I was just sitting backstage and watching this live hacking and all of that cool stuff happening. I was like, I should be with you guys sitting on the other side, but here I am. Um, and I'm here to talk about data and how data affects a 100-year-old company, which is Condé Nast. I'm their first chief data officer, and when I joined the company, uh, like I said, it's a 110-year-old company with a lot of legacy and print legacy. We've been having a lot of great brands, but my job is to come in and take data and make it relevant in an organization that's 100 years old. So the first thing I did, again, uh, I, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my experiences, what happened. Hopefully you learn something from this and take it back to your organizations. But it's all about uh, my experiences and what happened at Condé Nast. So the first thing I would say, or the first thing I did when I joined Condé Nast, was to analyze the culture of the organization. It's a, it's a very old organization, and being a data guy, I walk in there, and to me, um, this is the culture that I got into. Let's do this. Let's do this. In a sense, Team Vogue has seized the moment. The Webby winner in social education and discovery is Team Vogue. Well, Allure magazine says it will stop using the word anti-aging, saying anti-aging implies that growing older is a condition we need to battle instead of embracing. GQ posted an article calling Warby Parker the Netflix of eyewear. We had a wait list of 20,000 customers. Check it out! Bon Appetit magazine's new edition celebrates the contribution that children of immigrants make to America's food scene. If you're going to make a statement, you have to make a sacrifice. The goal for Wired is to make it a magazine about change. We have a look inside Wired Magazine's cover story about Facebook. They should have known, though, or they could have known. The New Yorker publishing a bombshell report about Weinstein. It's reporting at the New Yorker helped spark the national conversation about sexual harassment. How are you feeling today? So excited, because I've asked to do this like a hundred times, and now I'm finally doing it. Biggest achievement. Um, this. Definitely this. Biggest night in fashion, the stars out in force at the Met Gala, and the force behind the night, the legendary Vogue editor, Anna Wintour. So this was the culture I was walking into. Again, three years back when I joined Condé Nast, they're all extremely creative people, the right most creative brains in the world, and then, to me, I'm a data guy. So to me, this is a model, right? This is how a model looks. It's really great. As you can see, it's got four panes and all of that. But I was walking into an environment where a model was this, right? So right there, there was a gap in culture. So we had to understand the culture and figure out how to make it relevant for these people, the creative brains, the salespeople, and obviously our customers, our consumers, who are consuming all of this content. So this is kind of my journey. So the first thing I did was I needed to find a common language that enabled them to understand what's going on in the world. So I picked the biggest social media company there is, uh, Facebook, and I tried to explain to them that this is where the world is going towards. Performance, identity, 
and director of consumer relationships. Of course, there's GDPR and other things that happened this year, but when I joined three years back, that did not exist. So this was relevant then. It still is relevant. It's just as a matter of how you make it work, right? So I kind of said, this is the trend for the industry. And this is more to the management and said, this is where the industry is going. This is where we need to be going. So what does that actually mean? I said, look at your competition. They're analyzing every user, one person at a time, and you're telling me that we're going to print a 15-page print a article and just show it to everyone, and every human being who's reading that article is going to be interested in that. That makes no sense. It never works that way. So we had to change all of that, and that was my task. So the last three years I've been working on this, and uh, we've had some uh, good, good change. So from an opportunity perspective, we, when I'm talking about my customers, what do they care about? They care about all the information they can get, they can get their hands on in terms of what Condé Nast brings to the table. Again, Condé Nast, like I showed you earlier, is a bunch of very rich brands which engages with their customers very, very closely. And this is the kind of information we have available to us to enable us to personalize the user's experience. Again, we started with the user's experience and then went from there. So that's kind of where we were, right? So... And then I said, okay, let's set a big goal. You never get to something unless you set a very big goal. And this is something I use a lot, but again, don't worry about the chart. It's more about, you want to be the biggest bubble there. That's all that matters. You want to be in a position where you can optimize everything you do, whether it's your customer, it's your employees, or your audience, to provide them with the best solutions. So the idea here is what do you do for the best outcome? So this was like a giant challenge. Like I said, with all this data from various places, how do we bring it all together? So this was a goal I set for my team, and we set out to do it. So the first thing, again, the other thing was to kind of talk the talk that makes sense to our people, which is advertising was our pri primary revenue stream for all these years, uh, 100 of the 110 years, I would say. Recently, we've said, okay, we are touching consumers. How do we monetize that? and create an environment where your content can be, uh, your, your connection with your audience can actually make money. So the idea here was half of his advertising revenue, the other half is non-advertising revenue. It could be products, consumers, whatever. So that kind of enabled us to come up with a common metric that everybody could understand. The reason for all of this, all of this stuff that I just told you, was to find a common metric that everybody understands. And everybody understands one KPI, a key performance indicator, if you call it that, which is money. So ultimately, it comes down to that. I said, okay, let's, like I said earlier, if you had to generate money, let's just not focus on advertising, focus on other things. And the common thing everybody cares about is money, right? And then obviously building the technology to enable that to happen. So that was uh, kind of my next few years. So the other thing is um, we had to build a big team to go get the investment to build all of this. The one thing I learned, and again, this is not how my team started off, by the way. This is where it is today. When it started off, it was one box. It said, data. That's it. Everybody did everything. Doesn't really work that way. Meaning I came from a startup. I said, oh, what do we need? We needed a bunch of data guys. Let's bring them all together and make them all do everything. That prime maybe works in a startup, but in a big company, you need different functions. You need people to go out there and find partnerships. You need engineering, you need data science, you need product management, all of these things. It enables you to create an environment where you actually can market your services internally, which is a very critical function most people forget. We always think of marketing outside the organization. A big part of it is to market your data services within your organization. And to do that, you need to build a big team, right? A lot of technologies, I don't want to go into every one of these things, but fundamentally what this is, is understanding our users better. So we build technologies to find, uh, uh, you know, use our content, use our uh, analytics, delivery mechanism, a recommendation engine, an ID, all of these things. I don't want to get into every detail because we have like another nine minutes left. But fundamentally, this is all about understanding your customers. You have to build the technology. If you don't, you won't be able to engage with your users. The other thing is once you have all of this, we can use machine learning, computer vision, and all of that. And this is an example where uh, we've used this. I hope it plays, I guess. Well, it's not working. So that's fine. Uh, it was on my computer. Oh, maybe it is. OK, there you go. 
So what this is actually, a computer vision technology that builds a graph. This content, this person walking down that runway, looking at that exact dress, it matches up to similar dresses in the database and says, this is a dress this model is wearing. So whoever is consuming this video will be probably interested in dresses like this. So again, taking things like content, videos, bringing it together and creating an e-commerce opportunity was something we did. So again, this enabled me to connect with the creative folks. They're making this video. Again, they're shooting this video and all of that is great. But if you can show them, like I said, the common KPI, which is money, if I can show them this video that you're creating can generate more money, they're extremely happy. It enables them to hire more people, do the right things that they needed to do. So that's what this is. Again, taking technology, linking it up with something that they can believe in and taking it to them. So let me move on. The other thing I did, which again is very important, you can never do all of this on your own. Again, it's an eyesore, I understand that. But fundamentally what this is saying is find best in class data partners out there that enable you to do it. So don't do it all yourself, find the right people, partner with them, make sure you leverage their assets for your own purpose. And uh, believe me, there are a lot of people out there very hungry to do this with you. So that being said, we built some capabilities. We had audiences, segments, subscribers, our CRM files that we matched. Again, we built a bunch of capabilities that enabled us to do all of this stuff, right? And we took all of this and built some data solutions. Like I said, it's all about making money. And this is a recommendation engine. Again, taking all that, all that information, bringing it together, and giving them recipes. These are all pasta recipes, I think. Yeah, it's pasta. But again, putting it in a place where people can engage. So this is a screen that, again, it's not my screen because I'm not a pasta lo uh, you know, lover or anything like that. But for a person whoever the screen was, that person loves pasta. Somebody else might love something else. It's about taking all that information, engaging with that user, and once you engage with them in a much more detailed way, it enables them to actually give you the data and give you the personalization that needs uh, to make, uh, again, higher engagement, which again translates, like I said, to more money, right? And then we built dashboards. Again, I won't go into every detail of this. this uh, fundamentally, I think the common connector with every person in the company or outside the company and then audiences, everything else, is data, right? You have different languages, you have different ways of looking at it, but a person visiting a site is a person visiting a site. These are all various metrics about everything that happens, and this is a task that we gave to our, our visualization folks and said, everybody needs to get an answer within three clicks. Why three clicks? I just made that up. I said, okay, three clicks looks, sounds like a great number. Let's, so let's go with that. But everybody from sales to content creators to advertisers to everything that we operate runs off this single platform. So the idea is to bring all that data together, put it in one place, give them access to that. And once you have that, it makes total sense. You can start playing with that. Again, creative brains, they think data is their enemy. They believe I'm a creative person. Why would I need data? I can just do whatever I want. I'm creative. But building that common language is the most critical thing, and bringing your data together enables you to happen. And like any other company, you can start playing with the algorithm once you have that. Right? So it's, we built a lot of dashboards, lots of them. Every function has a dashboard. And uh, they all talk to the common language of that single database. This enabled us to connect with them and uh, talk to them in a very kind of unique way. And then this is our data platform, which just takes all the data, unifies it, and distributes it in various mechanisms. I talked to you about personalization, which was uh, a bone app uh, past the user interface. But taking all that data, bringing it out, and ex executing it across every distribution channel in a unified way is what we built here. And that kind of changes the whole equation once you do that. Right. So, my name is Lynn. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to give a. I, I clicked it too fast, but I talked about all of these things. We brought data together, we brought content together, and we brought information together. This is one example of how we've used it. This is a creative uh, that we made for a semiconductor company, 
So the conversation would have been previously, just to give you context, they'll just oh, build some creative. We test it, we make sure it works. Most sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We'll go back and give them information. This was the first time we went to the actual company and said, look, this, again, they, we have Wired, we have uh, Ars Technica, two technical magazines. They just said, let's run a creative. We went back to them and said, look, based on the audience and the information we have, the person you should connect to is a woman who is artsy, who likes to teach, who is probably interested in a lot of other things in life, and that's the profile of the audience you need to go after. Why? Because the people who are using these computers are not these uh, you know, people in IT shops with giant servers. These are people who use these computers at their kitchen desk when they're cooking, when they're talking to their friends. They're doing multitasking. So we said, we found this one person, you should build a creative with that person. And they, they actually built this, and this was the best performing creative for them for ever. So that's what data can do for you as long as you can bring it all together. So I'll just play this quick thing. My name is Lindsay Scott. I'm an actress and coder, but I also do modeling. A lot of people wonder how I could do both acting and coding, but both use the creative parts of my mind. When I'm acting, I'm always on the go, and it's important to always be connected so I won't miss whatever opportunity comes my way. At home, I'm able to do app development work for clients, and when I use a device every day, I want it to perform well, I want no crashes, no freezes, and, you know, I want it to look good too. I love teaching kids to code. I go in in my octopus onesie, and I show them all sorts of new and exciting technologies so that they can see that no matter who you are, what you look like, that there are people out there that they can be inspired by and look up to. So that's what we built. And we helped them, like I said, with all the information we had, enable them to build a creative that works for them. The one last thing I'd say before I leave is all of this starts with a common language. And if you cannot connect with your creative folks, it will never work. And I said this earlier. It, it, it all starts with analyzing the culture. And if you don't do that, it doesn't matter. You'll just disconnect with them all the time. I'll give you a very quick example before I leave. Uh, before Condé Nast, I used to work for a company called Everyday Health, which was a startup media company. And uh, I decided that they, I know exactly what these editors need, meaning egoistic engineering brain said, I know exactly what they need. I'm going to build a solution. Went ahead and built the solution. And I was the president of the, one of their data divisions. And I told the CEO, send an email to every editor that they have to spend 10 minutes of their day on this dashboard. The email went out. Everything was great. Everybody was spending about 15, 20 minutes on that dashboard every day. Nothing changed. I said, what's going on here? I'm telling them what exactly to do, how they should do it. Nothing really changed. And then one day in the morning, I came in. And I started walking around the floor, and I realized they have their admins or executive assistants or whoever going into that dashboard, spending about 15 minutes and logging off, and then gave them some notes. Nothing really changed. Because they're not doing it, your purpose is not going to work. So you have to build that connective tissue. And at uh, Condé Nast, the first thing I did was, or even there at Everyday Health, what I did was, I worked with them and said, this is your dashboard. This enables you to get your job done better. You own it completely. I don't know anything. I'm not a creative guy. I don't claim to be that. You guys are the creative people. Go build whatever. So my advice is always connect with the right end user. Have them own the whole thing because it doesn't matter what you build. They'll never use it unless you make them own it. So that's kind of my journey here. Thank you very much. I've run out of time. Appreciate it. Bye.